Paddy, Ch Paddy Chayefsky's Oscar-winning comedy film The Hospital is starting on BBC Two shortly, starring George C. Scott and Diana Rigg. And the main news of the evening will begin here on BBC One in just a few moments. There's a change to Tuesday evening's viewing on BBC One. Blankety Blank is now at ten past seven and provides more laughs with Terry Wogan and guests. If ever I should leave Terry. you... Then at 7.45, a tribute to Eric Morgan. I'm singing in the rain. At 8.30, Sorry, starring Ronnie Corbett as middle-aged mother's boy, Timothy. There's a fly on it. It's my personal food taster, mother. <laughs> With that, it's dead. You're gonna get the back of my hand. Might be tastier than the omelette, mother. At 9.30, Destination D-Day, Sir Hugh Weldon tells the story of the complex plans and preparations behind the Allied invasion of Europe and reveals the extraordinary tricks and deceptions used to outwit the Germans. Then at 11 o'clock, the World Professional Latin American Championships from the Royal Albert Hall, London, with couples from over 20 countries competing for the title. And that's the new lineup for this Tuesday evening on BBC One. In a quarter of an hour, Barbara Dixon pays her own personal tribute to the Lancashire lass, Gracie Fields. And that follows the main news with Francis Coverdale. It's five past ten. Eric Morecambe, one of Britain's favourite funny men, is dead. Police are looking for a baby missing from her parents' car. And Zola Budd becomes a British champion at the first attempt. The world of entertainment has been paying tribute throughout the day to the memory of Eric Morecambe. The man who made people laugh for more than 40 years died early today after collapsing at the end of a special show for charity. He was 58. At what was to be his last appearance, he told the audience at a theatre at Tewkesbury in Gloucestershire that he was proud to have undergone open-heart surgery and grateful for the extra years he'd won. Minutes later, he collapsed and didn't regain consciousness. Ernie Wise, who teamed up with him when they were teenagers, said, It's the saddest day of my life. Michael Cole reports. Eric Morecambe had just taken his last curtain call at the Roses Theatre in Tewkesbury when he collapsed in the wings. His wife Joan was at his bedside when he died in hospital five hours later. Eric Morecambe was a great family man who became a British family favourite. His career began when he was 13. Born John Eric Bartholomew, he adopted the name of his hometown when he set out to be a comic, teaming up with his lifelong partner Ernie Wise in 1941. They'd learned their trade in the variety theatre, but unlike many acts, made a successful transition to television in the 1950s. Unquestionably, he was a very, very funny man off stage, but equally on stage, he was not only very funny, but it was rehearsed to a T. Uh, he left nothing to chance, and, 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 and the two of them, you see, would rehearse a thing. Ernie could really, um, at a kind of a sixth sense with Eric. For much of the 1960s and 70s, they were unrivaled in popularity, their Christmas shows becoming a national institution. Now, it's the arms around my little fat friend and you can't see the joint. Hello, Ernie. <laughs> my little fat friend. <laughs> can't see the joint? That's one of the best you've ever had, that. That is a beauty. <laughs> Arrived this morning all the way from Axminster. <laughs> <laughs> now it's the uh, short, fat, hairy legs. And how are the short, fat, hairy legs going, then? Does it smell of burning? Are you walking quicker? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Cagney. Your dirty rat. <laughs> I will fill you full of lead. Oh, Harry Rat. Jimmy Durante. Sit the back for your nose. Neil Ding. Now the stupid grin into the camera. The greatest of Britain's stage stars were delighted to appear on the show. The first show I ever did with them, my clearest memories are truly rolling on the floor laughing. And I left that rehearsal room and my ribs ached because I'd done nothing but laugh all day. But they worked extremely hard, they were hugely professional, very helpful. 
and when you did their shows really it was like a holiday with pay because you could they would never have allowed you to have made either a disastrous mistake or to have done something that would have made you look an unlikable fool in the eyes of the public Public honours followed popularity. The OBE in 1976 won each, as Eric Morecambe remarked at the time, so they wouldn't have to take turns wearing it. After two coronaries and open-heart surgery, he knew his time was short, but he always laughed off his problems. What's the doctor's verdict, though? You've got to... Uh... Very good. Very good. I'm not really here at the moment. I am a recording. <laughs> He's going to rest. I've got to rest. Weeks. For a couple of weeks, is it? Several. Several. He continued to work as often as his health allowed. Eric and Ernie may have thought of splitting at times, but they had too much respect for each other, and they never did. Intensive care unit, please. See ya. Bye-bye. I think he'll come under the greats, because I think he was a great comedian, and he had a great affinity with the public. They loved him, and I think... Uh, I know I was proud to be his partner, and uh, I think he'll be remembered. I certainly do. I think he comes under the same heading as a lot of the great, great comedians. The British public love double acts, and none more so than Morecambe and Wise. So, amid today's sorrow, there are a million affectionate memories of the tall one with the glasses. There'll be a special showing of the 1971 Morecambe and Wise Christmas show featuring Glenda Jackson, Andre Previn and Shirley Bassey on BBC One tomorrow evening at a quarter to eight. And Reginald Bosenkett, the former ITN newscaster, has died of cancer at his home in London. He was 51. He joined ITN as a trainee reporter nearly 30 years ago and soon became one of Britain's best-known newsreaders, famous for his relaxed manner and apparent fallibility. He read his last news bulletin in 1979. Later that year, on the Michael Parkinson show, he talked about his approach to the news. I just tried to do the thing. I mean, you're in someone's drawing room, aren't you? Mm-hmm every night you know you are and um, i just tried to make the news more human than it than it was reginald bosenkett who died last night police are searching for a two-week-old baby girl driven away in her parents car while they were inside a shop in battersea in south london soon afterwards the car was recovered in chelsea about a mile away but the baby was gone neil bennett reports Baby Louise Brown's parents had pulled up outside a shop, leaving the keys in the car and Louise in a carry cot on the back seat. 